Hello, this is part three of our comparative Bible study on the beginning of Jesus' Galilean ministry. During this part, we would like to wrap up Jesus' visit to Nazareth. Overall, this is our 43rd New Testament Bible study. During the last Bible study, we discussed how Jesus declared that part of Isaiah 61 had been fulfilled, in particular, that Jesus had been anointed. The Messiah in the Hebrew, or Christ in the Greek, means the anointed one, and as some commentary indicated, Jesus was indirectly stating that he was the Messiah or the Christ. Let's pick up with Luke chapter 4 verse 22 right after the Lord Jesus stated, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. Let's pause here for a little bit. So after Jesus said these things, maybe they doubted who he was, trying to minimize him, referring to him as Joseph's son. And then Jesus made this prediction of something that they would say. I'd like now to draw your attention, though, to this part highlighted in yellow, where it states, No prophet is accepted in his own country. This is the fourth gospel that this type of language is used. As we discussed in New Testament Bible Study 41, similar language was used in the other three gospels as well. Here especially, he appears to be speaking of Nazareth when he makes the comment about his own country. Jesus then follows this statement up with two examples from the Old Testament. Let's move on to those next. Verses 25 through 27 state, But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. Something especially intriguing about this to me is why Jesus chose these two accounts from the Old Testament. Let's first look at the account of the widow from Zidon. Zidon, as it's pronounced in the Old Testament in the King James Bible, is a country to the north of Israel along the coast. It is a separate country from the nation of Israel. As we discussed at the end of the last Bible study series, when Jesus traveled through the region of Samaria, that the nation of Israel was at one time divided into two kingdoms. You had the kingdom of Judah in the south, which comprised of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, and in the other kingdom, you had the other ten tribes, which were predominantly to the north of Judah. Elijah was a prophet, and he had much conflict with the king of the northern kingdom of Israel. In this particular story, King Ahab, who reigned from Samaria. And in those days, there was a famine in the land for three and a half years. And the Lord sustained Elijah by this widow woman in Zidon, that foreign country. And God took care of her, her family, and Elijah, as it states in 1 Kings chapter 17. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And as Jesus pointed out in Luke chapter 4, this is a widow from a foreign country when there were already many widows in Israel. So God is helping and using to serve him this foreign widow 
over Israelite widows. Let's continue on to the next account concerning Naaman the Syrian. There, Naaman was a military leader in the nation of Syria. Syria was another foreign country outside the nation of Israel. Naaman was a leper. Syria actually fought with the nation of Israel and at one time took a little maid from the nation of Israel who advised that there was a prophet in Samaria who could help Naaman be cured of his leprosy. This prophet was Elisha. Elisha was another great prophet in the northern kingdom of Israel, and he also had dealings with the king of the northern kingdom of Israel who ruled from Samaria. And he advised Naaman on how to be cured of his leprosy. Again, as Jesus points out in Luke chapter 4, there were many lepers in Israel in those days, and God chose to cleanse Naaman the Syrian. So here once again, it appears that Jesus is pointing out that God chose to assist a foreigner over other Israelites. As we will see, this was not well received. Picking up in verse 28, And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. It seems that Jesus obviously hit a nerve with them by presenting evidence that God had helped Gentiles in the past over Israelites. As a brief aside, we're not told the makeup of who these people were in the synagogue, what tribes of Israel they may have been from. Could they have been Jews such as Joseph and Jesus? And as I've talked about in the first Bible study series on the genealogy of Jesus, I believe Mary was also a Jew or more specifically, a descendant of the tribe of Judah. But the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, who were part of the southern kingdom, which was called Judah, had their inheritance all in the south of Israel. The regions of Galilee and Samaria were within the bounds of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel. Could the people of Nazareth in Jesus' day been descendants from the ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel? From what I've seen, it appears that some believe that those ten tribes that were part of the northern kingdom of Israel never returned, and they often refer to them as the ten lost tribes of Israel. Following that logic, it appears that they believe that all the inhabitants of present-day Israel were Jews who came back from captivity in Babylon. There are others, though, who dispute that. In New Testament Bible Study 12, we discussed Anna the prophetess. She was from the tribe of Asher. Asher was one of the tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel. In Mark chapter 5, it speaks of the country of the Gadarenes. A root word for the Gadarenes is Gad. Gad was also a tribe in the northern kingdom of Israel. Other verses that I've seen referenced with regard to tribes embedding themselves in the southern kingdom of Judah are referenced here. Could verses like these be used to argue that all the descendants of those ten tribes were not lost? Moving back to Luke chapter 4, it's really neat to me that Jesus chose these two examples involving the northern kingdom of Israel to reach these people in Nazareth, and they responded strongly attacking Jesus, and Jesus escaped passing through the midst of them. Here are a couple of other examples of Jesus either escaping, vanishing, or holding people's eyes so that they could not recognize him. We have an amazing Lord. Thank you again for your time. If I've been able to share anything good, it's a blessing from God. Lord willing, maybe we'll have another Bible study in the future.